Welcome to Digital Ship webinar of January 14th, 2021. In today's webinar, we are looking at advanced algorithms for optimizing crew scheduling and maintenance that can create more transparency between a ship and shore. We are connected to our solo guest speaker, Anissa Rizvanoli in Hamburg. She's a team leader of scientific computing and optimization at Fraunhofer Center for Maritime Logistics and Services that is also sponsoring this webinar. She will present a software tool uh, called SCEDAS that she has been developing together with her team. Anissa will talk for about 15 minutes and then we will spend about 20 minutes answering the, your questions. So please use the opportunity and send them to us anytime to the Q&A box that you see below your screen. As always, Carl Jeffrey, the founding editor of Digital Ship is here to lead us into the topic. So let's get started. Okay, thank you, Vida. So what just about everybody in a shipping company does, I think it's fair to say is plan and fix problems and there's one area of planning which hasn't been given that much attention which is the planning of the work which is done on board a ship so I think say we can say for hundreds of years the way it was done with shipping companies got a crew and they gave them tasks to do and then there's probably complaints about fatigue and overwork going back hundreds of years and uh, now we're talking about a digital technology way to do it a bit better so this is a project, so it started off as an initiative of Bernard Schulter Ship Management, and uh, they asked Fraunhofer, which is a German research organization, to develop a tool to look at crew scheduling, and it, now it's used by Offen Group and Carnival and Columbia Ship Management as well. So scheduling crew is a particularly complicated planning problem because you've got both the planning of the crew itself and you've got the planning of the maintenance work itself, and you've got a lot of... Uh, changes happening all the time so there may be a crew have got to do something urgently when there's a port call you might have equipment that breaks and needs urgent maintenance work and if, it, if it's not planned centrally you can see how these 14 hour days happen that somebody is a person who always gets to fix a problem and they get another task to do and another task to do and now, now they're exhausted so what this software does we've got one module which runs in the office which is planning the crew demand over a long period of time so Crews have uh, different people have qualifications to do different tasks, so it can tell you maybe you're better off having this person than that person on board for the kind of work we think we're going to do. And then we've got another module on board the ship, which is calculating the schedule as we go along, and we can update it as, uh, as things change. The uh, algorithm itself, so um, Anissa Rizvanoli has got a degree in computational science and engineering from Hamburg, so we've got quite heavy maths underneath here, which we're not really going to go into unless uh, we want to with the speak with the questions from the audience, but it's sort of heuristics ranking different alternatives with different rules and what if models. And the main benefit of all of this is transparency. So if a crew member says they don't have enough hours to see their work, you've got a basis to discuss it. You can get much better on top of seafarer stress. Um, you can even crews can see themselves why they're given this task to do. and uh, you can do stuff like if there's a job that comes up, you can see who's the best person to do it. And if somebody's available, you can see if that's really available. They're not just giving them a task to do in the middle of the night. So I think this is a huge potential improvement for um, the whole human factors side of it, as well as maintenance side of it and general keeping ships running better. So Anissa Rizvanoli is based in Hamburg. She's the project leader for maritime scientific computing and optimization research and development projects at Fraunhofer Center for Maritime Logistics and Services and responsible for customization and rollout to shipping companies involved in the project. So I'd like to welcome Anissa to give the talk. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Vaida, for the very nice introduction. I just shared my screen. Just give me an okay if, if everything... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good. Thank you very, very much for the nice introduction. As, as Carl um, explained, I'm going to, in the, in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to tell a little bit about how we are, go, how we are optimizing crew scheduling and maintenance and shipping in, um, at Fraunhofer CMM. But maybe before, before I get into the topic, just a few words about Fraunhofer Center for Maritime Logistics and Services. We are located in Hamburg, are part of the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, which is one of the largest applied research institutes in Europe. 
Our main um, areas of research and interest are ports and transport markets with focus on ports and, and hinterlands on doing a lot of research in IoT in ports, developing uh, concepts for port of the future uh, and a lot of uh, optimization for the hinterland operations. Ship and information management, which has the high focus on ship and every kind, um, every different information coming and going into the ship. Um, I also work in that department, and my team is specialized in um, formalizing challenges from shipping companies like crew scheduling, maintenance scheduling, or fleet uh, fleet wide network planning and solving them by methods of, by mathematical, by sp specific mathematical methods. We have an, um, a third field of research, sea traffic and nautical solution with a high focus on unmanned shipping, as well as on bionic and further research on that part. Uh, well, let, let us go into uh, a bit into the challenge. So why did we came up with uh, optimizing crew scheduling and maintenance and maintenance scheduling? Um, maybe most of you know that in the last decades, the efficiency requirements has increased on ships and the technological modification have led to less crew on board. You don't really need as uh, so many persons on board like uh, as you needed 40 years ago. On the other side, the economies of scale um, brings uh, bigger ships and higher port frequencies. If we think uh, uh, think about container ships, and this means for the crew on board that they have um, workloads in, in very frequent peaks which needs to be managed by, by uh, crews that are decreasing in size. And of course, one can, can obviously think about fatigue and uh, the, uh, the crew being over, overworked and having problems with, uh, to comply with, their with the rest hours regulations. Which this can lead to accidents. Accidents are not really a good thing, even for a shipping company or for the crew uh, themselves. And therefore, um, the, one of the challenging would be to schedule the crew in such a way that they are rested enough and all, um, all mandatory tasks for a safe, a safe shift operation are uh, organized in such a way that they are done by qualified, appropriate qualified crew. One must also think that on shipping on, on ships, you have um, the same crew doing the ship operations and the maintenance. And this is a, a one more aspect to be taken into account into this quite complex problem that nowadays being solved in a manual and experience-based way. And uh, that's why we have been approached by two shipping companies six years ago uh, to um, discuss with them and find for them a, a good method uh, how to reliably determine crew sizes and work schedules when you, have, when you take into account the voyage and all the tasks that are uh, needed to get done into, uh, during that voyage regulations like the STCB or flag specific regulations on the work hours, maintenance strategy and human resources, which are your CFRs for what kind of tasks are they qualified. And for that, to answer that, we built up a decision support system, which we call SCADAS. Um, it does not only contain algorithms for optimized crew scheduling at crew size, but it also contains some, some more steps before, like uh, gathering data in a structured way. I, I talked a little bit about the mandatory tasks that are needed for a safe ship voyage, but which are they? At, do, the, do the shipping companies have them on a digitalized way? This was not the case as we began with uh, with. Um, with our uh, project. And I um, here we see a work schedule. And the tasks that I meant are the, the um, yeah, this, this, um, these boxes here. Um, some of them are watch keeping tasks. Some of them are tasks that are related maybe to moving or to pilot takeover. And the plant maintenance tasks are the, uh, the um, green ones. As I mentioned before, there was no, uh, as we began in the initial situation, there was a lack of qualitative data that represent processes on board. So what we did, we went on board of the ships and took notices to the tasks that are mandatory for a safe ship operation. And we asked experts like the masters, chief engineers, chief officers from the shipping company, and ended up with a list of tasks that are mandatory for safe ship operation. Nowadays, we are, we are gathering all this data through a system 
system, uh, which is uh, which is a good method and not an invasive way to gather it directly from the board, from from on board of the ship. And this is how the systems look like. We call it timekeeper. So each of the seafarer can log in into that and uh, document their work hours on a task-based way. So in this way, we gather not only the tasks that are needed for a safe ship operation, but we also gather their duration and their relation to the, um, to the, to the voyage itself. And as the seafarers have, have anyhow to document their working hours, this is not really a um, much more effort to, to the normal documentation of the working hours, but it brings to the shipping companies and to the seafarer themselves uh, much more advantages than just taking the work and rest hours. With the, with the data gathered uh, from in, in this way, with this method, you can validate a lot of stuff. So you can uh, analyze, do a lot of analysis as the data is well structured and is put into some entity relationship based databases and get and can get out of it for any kind of analysis that you want. Basically, you can take a look at why the crew scheduling is different if you if you um, if you see two sister ships running on the same voyage, you can clarify on a data-based way uh, the, the actual way of work. Who is assigned to which task and why is, done, is it done like that? And also what we, why we created this, uh, this uh, model is because we wanted to find out the relation of tasks to the voyage in order to, to make an automatic process of putting the task to the right time in the voyage and not... Uh, yeah, not letting it, letting some persons to, to, to have to, to write down. You can do a lot of more uh, analysis if you have the data in this way. Uh, if you have the data in this way, you can see how many, what kind of percentage do your specific categories. Where I have uh, brought with me an example, for example, like 17% maintenance in the whole voyage, or if how many tasks are related to ISPS. And if you go deeper into the maintenance, you can take a look on your planned maintenance part and how many of that has been unplanned and how uh, which percentage of the whole work hours on the maintenance has been special, special maintenance. But this is just an, an example and shipping companies are uh, have then the possibility to create their own dashboards for whatever needs they have. Um, one more advantage of this way of gathering the data is for, especially for the plant maintenance data, is that you can get some more insights. Nowadays, a common plant maintenance system just put in the jobs, their frequency, their due dates, and the responsible person. But this is not always the person who, who um, executes the jobs on board. And by taking a look into the documented work hours with, based, with, with this task-based uh, approach, you can also see who is the, uh, the person who is really doing the plant maintenance jobs for which basically the chief engineer is responsible and have a better look on your maintenance status, the fleet-wide maintenance status. And this is just a, a slide for, for, uh, that shows which are the possibilities that you can use uh, for dashboards, for custom specific, for customized dashboards on the needs of shipping companies. Well, let's go back to the, to the main, uh, to the, our main uh, idea of doing um, optimized crew scheduling and crew demand. Uh, we now have the data, so we have the tasks, we have a list of tasks that are mandatory for a sh safe sh ship voyage, we have the human resources, which means that, which, um, that, are, that are qualified for the tasks, we know the regulations and know the plant maintenance strategy. And we have two, two components, the SCADAS office, where you can calculate your minimum crew demand, and the SCADAS onboard, which is thought to be for uh, on board of the ships, where you can and calculate on the fly optimized crew schedules. The voyage. Uh, we uh, for, for the voyage, we modeled and created in SCADAS um, a special information uh, model to have um, an, a holistic view of the voyage. To, and we separated in two, in, two, in two components. One is this navigational part, which is the ship operation. It uh, determines or defines if the ship is um, in transit, is in port, is, in, is doing pilot takeover and anchorage. And we have what we call the second component that we call work package. 
it should bring um, additional tasks to, to, to the voyage. If we, here we have in the, in the left side, we have an example of um, tanker ship with ship to ship operations. So going in Anchorage and doing bankering and then going again in Anchorage and doing bankering. On the, on the right side, we have um, an example of a container ship approaching the port of Hamburg with a special case that you change with the pilot like two times before going into that as you have the, the approach in the Elbe River. And the tasks that I mentioned previously, they are somehow related to this, uh, to this voyage. So basically, each of the ship operations brings a set of tasks with it that must get done during the transit or during the anchorage. And each of the work packages like bankers in this case, bunkering in this case, they, they bring also some tasks that should be done between here between 21st and the 21st of, of January between uh, one uh, between one o'clock and 19 o'clock if the bank really takes so long. And this is the time, uh, basically, this is how we, we organize and model the, the time, uh, time constraints for the tasks. They end up in the schedule. So if we, the, the schedule is, uh, the, the schedule that we just have seen, the voyage is here at the top. So we're seeing Al Jazeera's and then we go into transit and this is gray lines are the, the anchorage process. And you see, as we go out of the port or we have an anchorage, uh, which are uh, ship operations that are quite heavy, you need much more persons doing, uh, doing this ship operation or taking, being part of it. The like taking care of the mooring line or taking care of the of the anchor. Sorry, uh, we have far more tasks that are not uh, some of the tasks that are not really related to a ship operating state. So some tasks must be done every day. We see here the chief cook and the steward. They have to cook every day. is also a, a very important task. Um, and uh, we have some tasks that are related to, to the bankering process. We see it here. We have banker, so ship to ship operation and bankering, and the engine department is heavily involved in this operation. Some special task is the watchkeeping, uh, which is organized in traditionally in, in, in patterns. We have here the 4 8 pattern for the watchkeepers on, uh, on deck, uh, but you can switch the program, gives you the possibility to switch to 6 6 or whatever pattern you want to run on your on board of your ship. The gray part in this, in this um, schedule shows you the um, time that each of the seafarer um, is allowed to work without breaking the rules. And this yellow part shows the mandatory rest that everyone needs to, to get in order to, uh, needs to get in order to be compliant with the work and rest hours. But maybe for the office module, this is not really the, the most important um, message. In office, we want to calculate these different scenarios and basically we are interested in knowing which is our crew demand. And aggregated, uh, based on this work schedule, aggregated, we have, uh, we have the, this uh, information. How does the crew demand change during my whole voyage? And we see there are some heavy parts of it where we need more persons that we maybe have on board due to safe planning, or we need another, co another crew composition as we used to run uh, until now. And these are some, some good position support for the, for the time before putting the crew on board or to follow up if, if the, the crew consistency and crew size is the right one for this kind of voyage with that specific workload. You can also take some, some look at the analysis of the full time equivalent, not only in heads, the persons and how which, which positions are more involved and which are less involved. Um, you, um, uh, on, with the office module, you can um, validate your maintenance strategy. For example, we have here one calculation without the plant maintenance jobs and one with, with all plant maintenance jobs. And it came out that one deck rating must be on board additionally to get all plant maintenance jobs calculated on the right time and um, with the right frequency. Moving from office to onboard, um, it looks the same. So from, from, from the tool, um, the tool looks the same, but um, it has a slightly different scope because on board we don't have um, theoretical as many seafarers as possible, but we have only 22 or 23 seafarers for container ships. 
and you want uh, the, the master or the chief officer is interested in having a crew schedule that, has, that doesn't have any non-conformities or at least minimize them if it's possible. And with the onboard module, we give uh, them the possibility to recalculate this work schedule. And uh, in cases when something happens or the voyage changes, for example, if we have a delay in the pilot takeover, or if someone, as in this case, is cannot, cannot really work. Now, and then the master or the chief engineer would really like to redistribute the job in such a way that not the next engineer is fully in compliant, but that some of the people are in, in only for some hours in compliant in order to get still get the, the jobs done. And this is how it looks like the program calculates re, re, reschedules automatically the, the work, puts it to the next best prioritized person for the task, and in such a way that the incompliances are spread all over the, the crew and not by creating one person's which is two days long fully incompliant. This is one use case for, for the onboard module, but as I mentioned, is if you have here delays and uh, the transit will be longer or the ship is, you have to go to Anchorage because the port is not re ready, you can change your voyage. It's, it's quite easy to do it on, in the software and um, per, per, click, per one click recalculate your whole, your whole work schedule and have the decision to support on whom to, to, to get, uh, whom to get on board and working and uh, which of the persons uh, who, who should rest, go for rest in order to avoid fatigue. Well, we have a, a, a last module, which we call work and rest hours module. That's nothing uh, very specific. There are a lot of other software doing that too on board of the ships. We have created it because our, our customers wanted that. And uh, what we do there is just to, to document the work and rest hours and check automatically for non-compliances based on SCCB rules. And for that, we have been certified by the German flag by the way, also all the checks and for the SCCB rules in the whole um, in the whole module in all modules are also certified by the German flag, and we have uh, delivered to our partners um, an overview or a dashboard to to have such that the quality department can have good overviews on the actual non-compliances. Well, um, as Carl said, um, these are our partners. Uh, we began the, the whole journey with Bernhard Schulte and went on to to um, container to Klaus Peter Offen container Reederei, and now we are working together with Carnival Maritime. Columbia Ship Management is also supporting us with the plant maintenance part, and as you see, the program is, is also being used on board of ships. To conclude, some, some benefits of, of this whole suite for, for calculating optimized crew schedules and uh, crew sizes. Well, you get an optimized crew demand. You can assess the time uh, that is available for maintenance tasks. Um, you can do more risk assessment by checking the, the, uh, the different uh, adherence with the re regulatory requirements. You can run what-if scenarios. Uh, in different voyages, if you want, for example, to put the same ship on a different voyage, it happens now in the in the Corona time at Hapag Lloyd. They also changed some. They had to change some routes, and this, of course, has an impact in your crew size and crew demand. And this, with Skeda's office, you can calculate it in um, ahead before putting it on on board or trying it out with with real persons. Um, you get transparency through data-driven ba basis of discussion. You don't have to discuss on what people feel and, and experience, but you can take a look at the data and discuss on that. And of course, it's a very good tool for informed decision-making process for crewing budgets, which is one of the largest uh, part, which makes one of the largest uh, part of the whole budget for a shipping company. Well, um, maybe maybe someone will ask how um, how to 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 get uh, a work with or how how Fraunhofer works because I presented a lot of modules right now and, and we have different ways how we collaborate with our partners and with the industry. We do research and development projects for innovative answers. 
we do problem-oriented solutions as SCADAS is. So it came, the industry came to us with a problem and we, we, we developed a solution for that. And of course, we, we're not a software company, we do telemate solutions. So it's always need for customization and add-ons to specific uh, companies. And um, now I'm, I'm finished. And um, yeah, very interested in, in having good discussions on what I've presented. And here are my contact data if someone still wants to contact me after the webinar. Thank you for listening. Oh, well, that's, thank you very much. Yeah, well, we've got a few, um, got quite a lot of questions come up here. Um, just, just before we get into the questions, I'm personally very interested in how the crew feel about this. I don't know how much you've been able to talk to seafarers or, I mean, uh, I've worked personally with very bad scheduling software 20 years ago. I know that how, how annoying that is, but this is very good scheduling software that's well modeled and people can see what they're doing and people can understand. I don't know if you've had any talk to crew members about whether it feels... Yeah. Yeah, we had we we talked also to crew members. We went, as I said at the beginning, we didn't have that that kind of of uh, software to get the data. So we we have to talk to them, and they were very happy that someone was listening what they are doing, how their day is is full with work, and um, and as, so it it helped a lot. And I think still the most um, the main benefit is this kind of transparency. They are also interested in, in, in writing down what they have done during the day just to show to the next to the next CFRs or to the to their bosses what they are doing. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's a very common complaint we hear seafarers saying, or oh, the master's doing too much time on paperwork, you know, but I guess if you yeah. have a system like this, the master can say that there's no place in my schedule for doing this paperwork, so I can't do it or they say I'm stressed because I have to add another hour of paperwork or get a discussion about this admin overload that crew get. I think so, I guess it's all this invisible work that crew have to yes. do. Yes, yeah, yeah. And if they have the possibility to very easy write it down and document that they have spent like two hours every day on administration, then it's it's there, it's written. Oh, that's right. We're going to get to these questions then. So I've looked up the first couple of speakers on LinkedIn. So Victoria Kabenko is the CTO of iGage, which uh, makes uh, ships smart with sensors. And she's asking how you get data. Now, I don't think you integrate with any digital system. You just integrate with the plan maintenance system, isn't it? I think. No, 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 we don't. We get the, we get basically the stat static list of the, uh, the existing static list of plant maintenance jobs. Uh, and also it, their frequency and their due dates and put it into the, take it as an input for the schedule. So we have a scheduling algorithm that try to fill the gaps with this maintenance jobs, but we are not reading the data out from any, any kind of, of technical system. We would like to, but we're not so far. So, <laughs> and yeah, if, it, if, if for us, it would be great to have fully integrated solution, but it's still, um, yeah, ongoing work. Yeah, that's a, yeah. and then, uh, then Klaus Nemzo is the Chief Innovation Officer of Eastern Pacific Shipping in Singapore. So he's asking about integrating with uh, fleet management systems and planned maintenance systems. Do you have standard interfaces or are you integrated with any software packages already? Um, right, uh, we are in attempts to. <laughs> Because uh, for, uh, from our side, we, we use standard interfaces and are open. So we go for, for uh, exchanging information. So we, we were happy to, to get and give the information. But uh, we have long discussions with plant maintenance system providers, which are more or less closed systems. Well, OK. And I've got Neil Matthew. It came up my LinkedIn as maintenance manager with BWLPG. I don't know if it's the same Neil Matthew. But he, yeah, so there's a follow-up question here about um, can you give feed impact information back into the plan maintenance system about what routines and inspections are redundant or better ways? Crikey, I guess so complicated all this. <laughs> Different yeah, software I, systems. I, yeah, I, I can I imagine that people are asking if we put that information that we have into the into plant maintenance. We we would like to if uh, if any of the. PMS provider would like to to have us to write the information somewhere. That's not a problem. We can give it. Yeah, yeah, I guess it gets the imagination going about what's possible when you can do all yeah, these yes. things. Well, I guess, first of all, we'll just get the, uh, the, the scheduling part right. And uh, yeah, so, so Dan White is um, CEO of Signal, which is a London-based startup on uh, employee performance. 
Mm -hmm. um, so he's asking about compliance against the schedule. So I suppose it's a different direction. I mean, you're not telling people what to do. You're, you're basically trying to organise their work better, I guess. So maybe compliance isn't an issue for you, is it? Um, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think I get it right. You mean compliance with the, with the regulations or in general compliance of, of being, uh, having a lot of personal data? Well, our, our crew following the schedule that they're given. Uh, okay. Um, well, this schedule, as I mentioned, we consider only the very small set of data, set of tasks that are that really happen on board. So it's just a decision support to basically have a, have a feeling who is going to be who is going to have problems with the rest hours. It's not a schedule to be run as it is. So they just a decision support for the one who organizes the work and they don't have to follow up that schedule. They still are allowed to, I mean, who knows it better than the persons on board and the actual situation. It's just, uh, just helping them. Yeah, but reporting is a very different software problem, I suppose, a much simpler problem that, you know, recording what people did and... Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, so we've got a Klaus Nemzo is asking about the technical architecture, so we have cloud or is it installed on the software and does it work on mobile devices um right now it doesn't work on mobile devices it's a it's a desktop a big screen I suppose, basically yeah yeah it's a desktop solution um we maybe most of the people here that deal with the maritime world know that um, it's a little bit slow the movement to 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 uh, to the next generation of, of uh, hardware on, on ship so we had to stick on quite old hardware to make it use useful there and uh, but we, we are moving on so it's no it's not a cloud solution it's just like uh, they put it on on ships and they can uh, transfer data however they are organized their it is organized to the to, to the office and yeah reply and replicate the data there that's that's all so how, how do the crew get to know what their schedule is they, they just get told it do they or they print it out on board or um, differently, they, they handled it in a different way. Sometimes they are putting it into the office, so the main computer in the office, and they take a look at it. And some others had uh, both like uh, new displays, large displays, and they put it into the to the dining room, so they get a look at their schedule. It's it depends on the shipping company. This is nothing that we are very limited on it. We we just give the possibility to show this schedule, and they can show it as whatever they in what way they want. Okay, so Paul's got an interesting question about, I guess, how you're indexing what people do. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you're, not, you're not looking at crews as equal because they've got different qualifications and that goes into your system. Yeah. But there's also crew backgrounds which aren't in your system, like somebody's worked on a certain ship before. I don't know how you. No, 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 no. We have no history, and basically, we also don't know who is putting it for due to personal data. Uh, we're not gathering who the seafarer is; just his position. And um, we also do some kind of encryption behind that. So just that for us, it's not possible to map the, the person. We just want to have it on a position based. As, as I mentioned, maybe here in the schedule, you see here, we, we talk always on positions basis. It's not like master A, B or A, C, but we, we just say master, chief, junior, and that's all. Well, how do you decide who's appropriate for which job? Is it the qualifications they have or certain roles? Uh, yeah, or? the qualifications. And someone in the office must at least take a look at this um, at this qualification assignments because they have their job description. Someone created the job description. And this guy has to make sure that the qualifications are assigned on the right way. And for each job, there are, it's possible to assign more than one person. So each company will do it as they want or as they do as they uh, run the ships. Sometimes for a, for one company, a job must be done by the master. For the other company, they say chief officer is enough. So that's um, that's the difference then. But the possibility is there. Yeah, you can also bring in human expertise. So if the shipping company planner says like this person is much better for this <laughs> ship because they know it very well, and I'll override what the computer says. I guess I can. Or that override you're working together with the expertise together with the scheduling i guess that's a... yeah that's that's uh, that is part of the implementation and we'll leave the shipping companies do it on their own so we are out at that point so we're not interested in, in comparing persons just <laughs> yeah yeah so lenart is asking about what you do when there's the delay with the schedule and how the scheduling system is updated and if it's manual or automatic so it, i think it's updated on board the ship and it's manual together with the computer i think that's a 
Yes, um, someone has to, has really to to update that schedule. Also, I presented um, here the schedule. For um, if you have changes on that, if your anchorage is later, it's two hours later, then you have just to shift just shift it per drag and drop like two hours later and just re update. But the first time you put in your schedules, every every container shipping companies I know they have some schedules in before, so you have once to generate them, and after that it's quite easy. So the first step is of course not so automated. We cannot get it from nowhere and put it into the system. Someone has to has to put it in. If they have good other good systems where we are on such a detailed way, we of course can read it out. But until now, we haven't found something like that. So it's. Yeah, I like the way it's people working together with the computer. It's not like the computer just says, there's your schedule, I'll print it out. And yeah, know, the people are actually working with it and the computer's saying, this is where you're going wrong. And uh, yeah. So Torbjörn is asking, do you have approval by other flag states in Germany? I don't think you need, it's not a regulatory tool, is it? I don't think you need. Um, other approval? Well, no, we, we, we don't have it, but we have the approval from the German flag that we are compliant with the STCB, which is the minimum requirement for everyone in the world. So basically for flag states. And um, yeah, if we have maybe for, for to, to come up, I have some backup slides, so not a nice one, just a screenshot from an old version. But this is basically the rules what, that we stick on. The minimum rest hours in 24 hours and seven days, the maximum in seven days, and also the exceptions. For the tankers, there is some OPA regulations. Uh, we also include it in the software if you are, if you are using for it for a tanker ship. Yeah, this is how it looks like. Yeah, so Andres Casanova is asking about the, the the conflicts you get when you make a new schedule, but I think you showed that in your slide. So when you move things around, it'll tell you when you've now got new problems emerging. In a... Yes, uh, the the conflict is um, there are two 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 conflicting objective functions. One is you want to have as less as possible persons, and the other the other is to have as um, a minimized in compliances. And this is what happens when you reschedule and you have only twenty persons to reschedule. So sometimes the workload is is high, is such, uh, and, and comes to such a high level that you cannot manage it without non compliances. But what the program can do for you is to spread this non-compliance all, all over the, um, the crew and not uh, making one guy being specially non-compliant for two days long, which is not the way it should work. Yeah, so Philip Rabe is asking how you determine the capacity for planned and unplanned maintenance. So I can see how you do it for planned maintenance because the system yeah. can say, but the unplanned maintenance, I don't know how as, as the shipping um, company do it. Yeah, it's just a post analysis that we create for the unplanned maintenance. So we don't plan before the unplanned maintenance. One, uh, there are two possibilities. Either we, we analyze the data and see, okay, in, in average, we have 70% of hours, 17% of hours unplanned, and we try to fill it in the, in the schedule. Or uh, one just see how many time is still left for unplanned maintenance. This is, these are these gray boxes. This is the time that each of them can still work without breaking the rules. So to maximum, like 14 hours every day. And you can calculate, make a kind of pre-calculation of how much um, time contingent you have for, for, for your capacity, for your unplanned, if something happens. So a shipping company may want to allow 20% of the time unallocated yes. at the beginning of the voyage. And... Yes. Yeah, that sounds great. So Katerina Serini, so yeah, we're back onto the um, data integration. I think she asked that before we answered the question, I think. But I, I think we've answered this about, uh, I mean, there's a lot more possibility to connect with other yes. systems, but uh, as, as people ask about them, I guess we're, we're coming to them, aren't we? Yeah. And um, Jose, Jose Esteve is asking, how long does it take to get the system working and how long does it spend recording data on board Is that, um... uh, well this recording of data on board uh, on board works very very fast so we made the experience at the, at the beginning we we're not sure if, it, if it's going to work <laughs> so um and we made experience that there was no problem for the person just to drag and drop every day um it's their everyday work and basically if you are on a position you always repeatedly do the tasks and it's quite easy for you over the days just to, to fill up your diary with the tasks that you have done. 
And if you gather data for one year from different ships, then you have some good analysis data. It's not enough to run artificial intelligence into it, but it's good to have very, it's very good structured data to get the current situation, to get a feeling of the current situation. Otherwise, if the companies are not okay with that, so if they just don't want to gather the data from those ships, we can just sit down in three workshops, uh, three daily workshops with experts and, and de uh, define the works. And basically we are now doing it like six years and we have some also some own experience on what kind of data is mandatory for safe ship operation. Wow, that's interesting. So you don't just send this out to people as a CD-ROM, you sit down with them and, and yes. plan it out as a kind of yeah. workshop process. Yes, yes. yes, and it's, as I said, it's always a kind of, of customized um, um, for, for each shipping company. So we don't, we, we're not selling a, 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 how they're called, a software that is, that is done and we, we're just giving it, but we always uh, do customization. Oh, so Paul is asking now about linking in subcontractors. <laughs> I didn't see that on your spreadsheet, but I don't know. I guess you often have and a link I guess that's, a, mm. that's another, another line in your rows of work, is it? Yes, uh, we do. We do some also some research work and models for the fleet-wide crew scheduling, where you take care on which person is going to be when on, on which ship. Um, and we are planning to, to combine this together. This is the very focus on short term or middle term, but without taking care of the contracts. And the other problem is, problem is, taking, uh, problem is taking care of the contracts or determining which is the right contract for which ship, for which person. We are planning to, to combine them together, but that's also ongoing. <laughs> Wow. So Kumar Sundaram is Senior IT Project Manager with Anglo Eastern in Singapore. So he's asking about uh, variations of the system for tankers and bulk carriers. But it's not like Microsoft Office, something you just buy and download. So this whole consulting project you do with people to work out yes. what they exactly need. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. And for, as I said, for tankers, we also have some, uh, for example, the specification with these OPA rules for the rest hours, which we included. And uh, the, 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 the tasks for the tankers and their, their voyages looks differently than for container ships, of course. It's like we have also to sit with the people and write it down and combine it. Yeah, okay. So, so Marlies is asking about mapping the roles and tasks so yeah, I guess this is what your, your spreadsheet does, I suppose. Yes, yes that's the exactly map do. the roles and tasks for predicting appropriate resource. So yeah, I, I, we do. So basically we map this, these positions and roles and see what happens to the main, um, the most affected position for unplanned maybe is the, the, the engine rating and not really the chief, office, the chief engineer or, or like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Kum Kumar is asking what data he gets in the office in real time. Is this a so you're sending mm. we are sending that uh, that uh, data gathering so the the, the diary basically um, once a week or if the if shipping companies want it once a day we can also send it once a day they can set up whatever they would whatever frequency they want and they will have a real work, real time data on office but I think until now once a week was quite a good good deal otherwise they would be just looking to the data coming from the ship. Oh, okay. So it's a long question by Paul, but I think the summary okay. is that um, the work is often different to how it's imagined to be. There's some theme we've had a speaker of mocking for one of our events, like work is done versus work is imagined. So somebody assumes this work is done in two hours and actually it takes 10 hours, I suppose. But a software like yours can help make this more visible, yes. I suppose, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes, and uh, we, we are aware of the fact that we have differences and it depends on the persons how, how long a job takes, but at least we have a good basis for discussion and what happens right now in shipping companies is that when uh, when um, when ships use it on board, we get a lot of feedback like yeah, that task is too short planned. That's, that's too short. So we, the task always in, in average, we take four hours for that. And then they can reschedule it and everyone discuss on, a, on an information base. We cannot say we don't begin with that because we, we, we don't have an average. It's like better this way to, to begin and adopt it than not, not doing it. Wow, so we've got a one up vote for Paul. So a lot of questions from Paul here. So I was at the piracy one. Um, so you can have additional demands for watch keeping when you're in yes, a piracy yes. zone. 
Yeah, yeah, we have we have it also involved in the system. We call it security areas. And if we set up, if you set your voyage to be in security area three or four, whatever they are called, then you it automatically adds watch keepers, more watch keepers. So it's it's part of it. It's like a work package as I presented, right? To the bankering and additional. This is this is called work package security, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, your philosophy is very different to a lot of scheduling software. That's maybe quite important in the way that the expert is working together with your software, not just getting some output yeah. that they have to follow, I think. And, uh, so you yes, can sort of change yes. it and say, look, the schedule is totally wrong and, and change it around as you go along, I think, can't you? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's more as we, we want to give a well, well, a well founded decision support. It's not like we want to sell the software, but but just to help to 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 give the um, shipping companies really good good decision support that's oh. for calculations and not on some studies or some feelings or experience yeah so it's a question from marley so i think people are maybe because using systems like this often for recording what people have done rather than scheduling i think so maybe there's a bit mm. of a misunderstanding there but uh the seafarers don't need to update any information but uh i guess somebody on the ship who's probably the master will do this scheduling and tell people what their schedule is i guess that's how it works isn't it or, yeah, but this is also uh, uh, good for the master. So basically, the, the guys who are using it on board are master, chief officer, and chief engineer. So this kind of, it's for them a decision support to help them schedule. So Paul is asking about whether related issues, so as manning requirements change, but I guess so you can update it on the fly. I think that's a part yes. you showed, isn't it? So that's important. Yes, yes, you can. It's the many, if someone cannot work or if you have more people on board, then you can just put it in and it will reschedule. Wow, well, there we go. So we've got a, four questions from Paul, one from Marlies. <laughs> well, one from, maybe we go for Alexander Oswald at the bottom. How much, oh, the cost, are you able to reveal the costs of the... Uh, it's difficult to say it depends on the shipping company as we are working from from container ships to to ferries and cruise liners then we we um, discuss with them directly i cannot really give as i said we don't sell the software well so, so michael valkov is asking so yeah this is software i'm sort of forcing people to do things can you say in the schedule that something can't be overrun but i guess the person in charge is the person using the software the software is not telling people what what to do at any point yes yes yeah. yes yes it's nothing that must be implemented what software said the software should just help you to to make it better no you can't even have the office saying to you must have this thing in the schedule because it's very no, important that no, the crew no. are no, no, no. They have it. So the crew, the, the onboard module is um, totally on the responsibility of the ship. So oh. office just sends out a first uh, first schedule and the ship is the only one that knows how is how the real schedule is, the, the delays and so on. And that's for them. So, so Paul, Paul's question at the top. So what, what happens if you can't plan how long a certain task will take? I guess you have to plan or make some estimate to begin with, I guess, otherwise it wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, it won't work, yeah. Oh. Um, so, so Marlies is asking that the frequency of updating to the office, without, is that daily, is it? Or? Um, well, it, it depends on the shipping company, as I said. They can do, what they do in most of the cases is once, uh, one in, uh, weekly. So one, but they can do it every day. <laughs> They want. But I guess the office don't really need it. They want to know that things are being done and they want to, and that they're using it in a different way to the ship, I suppose, aren't they? Or unless the office want to use it as a reporting tool, but I guess it's not really designed as a reporting tool, I suppose. So. Yeah, yes, yes. Alexander at the bottom, have you approached flag states? Say mm -hmm. this is a tool to help them decide safe manning levels. Hmm. Yes, we have. And oh, we're right. in discussions with them, still in discussions with the one of the largest flag states. Oh, will that be about reducing the manning levels or increasing them? Not really. Oh, okay. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's another way we can cut costs. And uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, sounds great. I haven't read uh, Paul's last two questions you left. But, uh, I'm, I'll go for the shortest one. Does it? Um, so the, the variables of different contractors and consultants. Yeah, I don't think we're going into contractors and consultants with this. That's probably a bit out of. A, out of scope, I suppose. Yeah, and then that's um, okay. And there's a system factor in the variables of various contracts. 
I think Paul has a lot of ideas of how you can make this software even better, I think, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, then he, I think he should contact me directly. <laughs> <laughs> so some, some ports are much more efficient than other ports. I think that's the top question. So how do you, uh, how do you plan how long a port call is going to take? I guess if it's a uh, Rotterdam or um, if it's... Well, for, for, as I said, we, we take into, we take as first, at first we take uh, into consideration the schedule that the office, that the um, office has. So basically for the container ships, they had uh, one year, for one year, their schedules and we take it as a basis and the on ship, they can up to the next minute, <laughs> they can update it and say, well, we're going to have two two hours delays at the end of the at the end of the year you can go back and see how often you moved your your port stays and can also make an analysis of ports out of it that's not a problem but this is what we have not done until yet but the data is there you can do whatever you want an analysis on on the voyage side on the schedule side there the data is so yeah you can use the data for whatever you want yeah i mean you, you can use it for reporting i think you mentioned that at some point i think as john owen is asking to the lock the records after a certain point so they could be used as a as a regulatory record is that a um yes they can be used um the i presented the last module that kind of work and rest hours module and we can print out of it an mlc record so mlc compliant record so they can just be printed and handed out to the port six controls <coughs> And oh. where the, the, the German flex state said, yeah, that's um, the, your checks are, are compliant with, uh, with the rules. Wow, well, that's 30 questions. Wow, <laughs> you must <Okay>. be exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fascinating. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's a great story. I've done other, other interviews with Columbia. I know how seriously they take the whole seafarer mental health and, you know, they do stuff with counselling and cooks on boards so they must really see the benefit of this and helping helping crew to to work better and uh, that's great uh, that they got these big companies working with you isn't it? i think it's a yeah. like that's probably a view of what the future is going to be i mean maybe it's more useful for bigger companies than small ones but maybe not i don't know it's it? it's the same as it's, it's the small companies can can be faster with that because they have shorter ways of communication so they can just run it let it run onto the three or four ships and uh, it's fine yeah, yeah. yeah. Paul, Paul is also asking about a different <laughs> different ages of ships, and a, it's yeah. it's a good point. Um, um, you can get it from the data, I suppose. If uh, you you see the difference in the same maintenance job between an old ship and a new ship, and you also have some kind of data to make decisions on if you want to still run the ship or not, or if you want to change the. Uh, the it's all about having good structured data, and then you can see your your current situation map on that. Yeah, you're supporting the shipping company experts to bring all this information into, and they can do it. You know, they can bring all this stuff rather than just yeah. giving every ship every ship the same schedule. It's much easier for them to yes. make custom yes. schedules for the needs of different ships. And the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Well, we're coming up to the end now, so we can just sort of. If you have any 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 last thoughts, I mean, I, I think personally, I think it's yeah, very interesting transparency. I think this is a view of the future. I think all this talk about making it richer and integrate with more systems—that's all great. But we know how hard it is to integrate software with other software. It's maybe the hardest challenge. But even as a standalone thing, it, it's uh, enormously useful. I think it doesn't need to integrate with any other software. I think, but uh, I'd like you're open to discussions about all of this if people want to talk to you. And uh, yes, I would be. It would be great if. Um, if I could have some further discussions, um, yeah, after this on, on integration or whatever issues or ideas people might have to 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 collaborate. Yeah, we'll send your email out to all the participants in the follow up email. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, if you've got any any last comments you'd like to make before we finish. Um, no, I'm I'm happy, and we had a lot of questions, and thank you very much for the organization. It was a pleasure to yeah. to have this webinar with you. <laughs> and oh, thank you. Yeah. In, in real life uh, soon. Wow, sounds uh, lovely. Okay. Digital ship conference. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's great. Well, I shall pass back to Vida for the closing words then. Thank you very much. Jeez. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. So here you heard Anisa Rizvanoli of uh, Fraunhofer presenting SCADAS and its use case. 
I think you'll agree that Anissa is just radiating passion for solving crew scheduling issues. And she is not only managing the project, but likes to get her hands on calculations and uh, writing algorithms. And uh, next week uh, on Thursday, we are covering maritime cybersecurity uh, with shipping companies Tenamaris, Navarone, and uh, cybersecurity uh, lab from the University of uh, Plymouth. So now a digital ship is signing off. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.